Hi everyone, welcome to the course Project Application Development. My name is Sebastian Esterlund and I'll be teaching this course together with Atze van der Ploeg. So this lecture is split into four main parts. Uh, first I'll talk a bit, yeah, a short introduction about the course. Then I'll continue on to uh, some background information that you need to finish the assignment. Then Atze will take over and explain some C. And then finally I'll give you some hints, pointers on where to start. So, on to the introduction. So, as I already mentioned, my name is Sebastian Esterlund. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the FUSEC group. Uh, my research area is mainly memory safety, fast testing, and I've done some microarchitectural attacks. You might have heard about Riddle or MDS in the news. So, the goal of this course is for you to get some more hands-on experience with programming. So you already had the C++ course in the beginning of the year, but of course that's a while ago, so it's always good to be forced to do some more programming. Uh, so this course covers mainly low-level programming, but we have tried to incorporate some other uh, aspects or topics from other courses. Uh, so mainly in the last part, uh, you'll be able to implement some cool stuff looking at, which looks back at some other courses you've had during this year. So we have a huge team of TAs. Uh, we have 12 TAs in total and two lectures. So there's plenty of space here for you to get uh, support. So if you're stuck, uh, always try to get help. So don't uh, keep, uh, yeah, don't keep hanging on some problem. That's uh, I'll always ask for help. So we have a few different ways uh, where you can, yeah, a few different methods for you to ask for help. So the main point of contact is the discussion board. Uh, the URL is also available on Canvas. So if you have any questions, always post it there. Uh, and of course, read the rules uh, and use common sense when using the uh, discussion board. So don't post your whole solution there, for example. Besides the discussion board, we also have some, uh, well, we'll be organizing some Q&A sessions uh, on Tuesdays, so every week Tuesday, the first uh, one is on the first Tuesday of the course, uh, and yeah, every week at the same time. Uh, we don't really know the format yet, but uh, we'll kind of adapt as uh, as we start with these things. So it kind of depends on you. And then finally, uh, you can always contact your TA, but uh, try to use the discussion board for most uh, questions so that other people also can make use of. Uh, if you ask a question, someone asks it, like, this helps us uh, work more efficiently. The material for this course is available uh, in the manual. Uh, so this manual is available as a website at this URL. Uh, we also have a PDF of the manual. The setup of this course is basically you have one deliverable, so one assignment that you have to implement, and you have fewer than four weeks. So it's quite an intense course. Uh, to help you along the way, we split this into five smaller sub-modules sub so that you can focus on different parts uh, each week. Uh, so yeah, five sub-modules. Uh, in total, you have four meetings uh, to discuss your progress with your TA. So you have individual meetings with the TA to discuss or uh, yeah, discuss your progress or ask questions. So use these uh, meetings, uh, yeah, use them efficiently. One other thing to note is that the deliverable for this course should be implemented individually. So uh, yeah, no groups, uh, no collaboration. So avoid getting caught for plagiarism. Uh, don't send your co code to other people. Uh, that's basically the take home message for that point. Uh, and basically the deadline for the assignment is Friday, June 26th uh, in the evening. Uh, then the TA will grade your assignment during the weekend and on the Monday after that uh, you will have a kind of oral evaluation where you have to walk through your assignment with your TA. Uh, of course this falls with uh, uh, yeah outside the normal teaching period so if you're done before the Friday you can request uh, to have a different date for your oral evaluation but this is uh, you can discuss this with your TA at a later point. So what do you have to do for this course? So in short, the summary is basically implement the subset of the Java virtual machine in C, which sounds like a huge task. Uh, so hopefully we'll uh, help you a bit on the way here. 
So what is the IJVM or the JVM? So maybe let's start with the JVM or the Java Virtual Machine, uh, which is a instruction set architecture or ISA for short. Uh, the IJVM is a, a subset of the Java Virtual Machine instruction set uh, created by Andy Tannenbaum for educational purposes. Uh, and this instruction set only considers operations on integers, so it's a lot smaller than the full Java instruction set, but it's still, yeah, it's a subset of it. It's still quite interesting. So in the end, uh, what you will have done during this course is create a program that takes input uh, IJVM binary and then can run that binary uh, successfully. So basically you implement a subset of the Java virtual machine. Well, as I already mentioned, this course uh, consists of multiple modules. Uh, so basically we have five uh, mandatory modules uh, to build up the basic functionality. And then there's a sixth one, which covers some additional features that you might want to implement to get a higher grade. Uh, so these are spread out over four meetings and this is the tentative planning. So the idea is that you're done with module one before the first meeting, which is for most of you uh, within a few days. Uh, of course, there's a lot to be done for the first module, so we don't expect you to be done with it, but that's kind of the pace we want you to keep. Uh, for the second module, you have a bit more time. Uh, for the third and fourth module, you, uh, you'll discuss them during the same meeting, basically. That's the planning here. So these are not that huge individually, so we've grouped them together. And then there's a final uh, module on method invocation and, uh, well, we'll Come back to what this really entails later but anyways that's the hardest one by far and then if you want a higher grade you can uh, implement some cool additional features so how is your assignment graded uh, so a nice thing about this course is it's almost fully automated uh, so first we have some basic tests which account for 40 percent of your grade uh, and we have a hard requirement yet you need to pass all these tests to get a passing grade for the course then we have some advanced tests, uh, which account for 30% of your grade. Uh, and these scale, like this grade scales linearly to the number of tests that you pass. So if you pass all of them, you get three points on your final grade. And if you pass half of them, well, 1.5 and so on. And then there's 10% based on style and general impression. So it's basically your coding style and uh, ba basically, yeah, how well you understood the whole assignment. Uh, uh, and then you can get 30% extra on top of this by implementing additional features or additional functionality. Uh, and this is available in chapter six of the course manual. I'll also discuss this at a later stage. Uh, so we have a bunch of different additional features that you can implement. You're free to pick and choose whatever you like. And this grade is capped at 30%. And of course your final grade is capped at a 10. So if you look and count these things together, you can get 11 points and well, you can get an 11 as a final grade. So it's capped at 10. So a word of warning, uh, the workload is really, really high for this course, at least in the first week. Uh, and then for the later weeks, it's it might be more manageable. So be prepared to work all day, basically, during the first week. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind that this is a full-time course. You're expected to work, uh, yeah, nine to five every day, basically. But uh, yeah, it's up to you how much time you put into this. So some hints to get you prepared for the course basically is to well be well prepared for your first meeting. So it's always good to leave a good first impression when you meet your TA and you should be well on your way implementing the first task so that you actually can use this meeting uh, in any useful manner so that you can ask uh, good questions and that the TA can help you if you're stuck. So one general hint we have is try to get the three first modules done as quickly as possible since they're well from our experience they're uh, more they're easier to implement than the rest of the modules uh, so the toughest part is actually getting everything work to work correctly in the end so you will have a bunch of bugs that you will need to debug so uh as i already mentioned there's uh, individual meetings with your ta so we'll open uh, enrollment for the TA meeting slots today at 6 p.m. Uh, so see Canvas for an announcement on how to enroll for these groups. And the manual is available right now. Uh, so the URL that was available already in the slides or there's a link on Canvas. Uh, so start reading it now, basically. So 
I also mentioned the Q&A sessions. Uh, we'll have four of them in total, always on Tuesdays at 13.30. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, also post some announcements on uh, how these things will actually work. And we'll adapt them. If people have some suggestions, we'll adapt these things, uh, the format of these Q&A sessions. Yeah, I already mentioned this. The first point of contact is the discussion board. Uh, well, then the second part, we don't have lab sessions, so the Q&A session, and finally, you can contact your TA. So that was the general introduction of the course. So I hope you have an idea of how uh, this course will continue. Uh, next part, I'll talk about some background information that you need for the assignment.